Karen and Jack Hackard lived in the rural community of Thompson Station, Tennessee. Their five acres of land had always provided a safe place for the kids to have fun, but on April 19, 1993, they discovered that sometimes a child's worst enemy is his own innocent playfulness. My husband was getting ready to leave for work, and he was discussing the length of the grass with Amanda. Fourteen-year-old Amanda mowed the lawn about once a week. My brothers, Josh and Jerry, they're twins, and they get into everything. Most of the times, you have to tell them five times what they have to do before they'll do it. Mandy's very intelligent. And she knows how to use things. But if anything is, is handled improperly, it's dangerous. I got around the house about twice. And the twins came up and said they wanted to ride. Where do you want to go? Swing. I told him I'd pull him to swing set without the blades running. So that's all. Joshua and Jeremy had a very premature birth, which led to a lot of medical problems. They didn't think Jeremy would walk, and Joshua was so fragile and so little. Josh, do this. You cannot tell them that they can't do anything, because they'll prove you wrong every time. I turned too sharp and the wagon tipped over. I was thinking, well, I guess I didn't have to stop it and unhitch them. I turned the blades on and I started mowing again. Just ran up to Amanda. But she didn't hear him, because the blades were on. The grass was all wet, and his feet just slipped out from under him. I think my heart stopped beating. I'll never forget that sound. It was just like the skin was exploded off of his knee. I had no idea what had happened. My first reaction was, my God, his leg is almost gone. When we continue. As I tried to talk calmly with him, I really felt that Josh was going to bleed to death before the ambulance got there. 911, what is your emergency? Oh, my brother ran onto the lawnmower. He got his leg. He's got his leg cut up in his bone star. Where is he cut, ma'am? He's cut on the knee. Okay. Foot. Is it he's bleeding? Cut real bad. He's bleeding all over. His bone's showing. Okay. How old is he? He's five. I'll tell you what you need to do. Have you got some, some clean cloth there? Ma, get some clean cloth. I got it. He got it. Williamson County okay. Dispatcher Guy Carton was handling the call. What's the nearest street to you? The biggest problem would be to make sure he didn't bleed to death. You could hear her brother scream or cry in the background. And you need to hold pressure over the wound there. Hold pressure over it, Mom. Hold pressure over it. She stuck her hands up, you know, like, where? There's more than one. I don't have a million hands. The nearest rescue unit was more than 12 miles away. See if that's going to slow the bleeding down for us, okay? Oh, no, he's cut on his belly, too. Cut on the belly? The further we talked, it seemed like she took in more and more of his injuries. The stomach, 
his fingers being cut. I was trying to think of which one would be the most dangerous, which one would be the most life-threatening. He's still awake, all right? He's still awake. I had to maintain, and I had to try to shield Josh from knowing the extent of his injuries. But as I tried to talk calmly with him, I really felt that Josh was going to bleed to death before the ambulance got there. I thought I was having my very last conversation with him. Within 16 minutes, the first rescue unit arrived including EMT Bobby Rutledge. You got a lot of road time to think about anything imaginable which you could believe can happen by being cut up by a moor. You could have amputations, legs, arms, or even death. Do you have any medical history or anything? Um, yeah, he's got a lot. He was a, a preemie. He was on the vent for a week. He has a seizure disorder. Which he I really felt guilty that I had not protected him from one more injury, one more assault against him in his life because he had been through so much and he had conquered so much. He has asthma. I was thinking, you know, after all he's been through, is this the way it's going to end? You know, it, is this what it's all been for? Okay. Put that under your back, you sweetheart. You're going to get all the yellow for her, okay? You're really getting a little brave boy. I thought it was my fault. Jeremy followed me outside and started saying, it's not your fault, you know, that he still loves me, no matter what anybody says. She's going to be all right. <laughs> At Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, Josh was treated by a team of doctors, including pediatric urologist John Brock. There were multiple operations that had to be performed for Joshua, both orthopedic and urological in nature. So as a result, both teams were operating at the same time uh, in different areas of, of the body. I'm very pleased with with some of the uh, results of what we've done, and we're just going to have to wait on time to have another final results, though. Even after he got out of intensive care, I kept hearing, it's too early to tell, it's too early to tell. We didn't know what use he was going to have of his leg or, or his fingers or whatever, but we felt then, okay, we've still got our son. <laughs> Less than five months later, Joshua Hackard has made remarkable progress. About a month after the accident, it was his sixth birthday, we bought him a bike. And he was determined he was going to ride his bike. So he did everything he could to strengthen his muscles. He swam every day, exercised his leg. He didn't like it. He cried, but he did it. I just have that scar on. I can bend it. Run my bike with it. I read in the paper that many of the ambulances in our state are not well enough funded that they are able to carry child size equipment with them. If our ambulance had not had the mask pants or that kind of thing that fit him, Josh will probably wouldn't be here today. Doing good, Josh. Because of the severe amount of blood loss that he had, he very clearly could have died if someone hadn't been so thoughtful and, and, and quick in the way they managed this child. A lot of people saved Joshua Hacker's life. Go for it. Yeah! Yeah, boy, yeah! Now, we're more cautious about everything. The rules are that the twins have to be on the in side of the house or on the opposite side of the yard that I'm mowing. If someone is mowing in the backyard, we'll have to be in the front yard. But if she's mowing in the front yard, we'll have to be in the backyard. Because they have blades, and they can cut you. I think they're doing great. They're going to have problems for the long haul. They're going to have to work twice as hard as other kids with three times as many doctor's appointments, but they're going to make it. They're going to make it.